All right, everyone. Uh, I am very excited to be here today. My name is Rob Lally, and I help businesses uh, basically with a lead generation strategy over LinkedIn. Sometimes I go in and I help their teams and teach their teams exactly how to do it. Other times I work one-on-one -on -one with solopreneurs, um, but I didn't always start in kind of that place. I was originally a career coach, and when I set my career coaching business up, I basically just sat back and waited for clients. I made the schoolboy error of sitting back and waiting for clients. And what happened was I didn't actually get any attention whatsoever. So it sent me on this bit of this sales and marketing journey uh, where I you know, read tons of books, took tons of courses, got mentors, things like this. And I took some of like the main principles that I learned and I implemented them into uh, LinkedIn. And after a while, my career coaching business was consistently booking calls. I thought to myself, you know what? I bet there's some business owners out there who are once in my shoes, who basically, you know, maybe not getting anything from LinkedIn and want to learn how to, and maybe I could actually teach them that. So that's kind of what led me to where I am now. Um, and before we kind of you know go any further i just want to you know kind of take it to the audience a little bit is anybody is anybody on linkedin right now and they know they you know aren't getting the most out of linkedin they know they're kind of leaving some um some leads on the plate there yeah we got corinne there okay awesome awesome well hopefully today i'm gonna you know change that for you that's like my aim today and Here's how the session structure will go. I'm going to, first of all, uh, teach you how to create a LinkedIn profile, how to you know, take a basic LinkedIn profile and turn it into a marketing machine, how to prospect over LinkedIn and build real meaningful conversations in the LinkedIn Messenger with ideal prospects, um, how to actually you know, create content that attracts clients to you through content marketing, and then it, if we've got a little bit of time at the end, I, um, I do believe like the questions you ask are where probably where the most value is going to be. So I will do a, a few LinkedIn profile reviews live for those who are brave out there and uh, don't mind me going through your profiles and, and you know, telling you what I think will be improved, what's good already. And then we'll do a bit of a Q&A at the end. Does that sound good? Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So Everything that you're about to see is um, honestly my opinion, what's worked well for my clients, what's worked well for me as well, and I think it will work well for you. And this is the general LinkedIn strategy, uh, like a 30,000 foot overview, bird's eye view of essentially how the LinkedIn strategy works. You first of all create a profile, LinkedIn profile that's compelling that does the heavy lifting for you in terms of marketing what you are going to um, sell. Then you message ideal clients, they check your profile, they book a call. You create content which your ideal clients see, they check your profile, they book a call. And when you can combine all three together here, messaging ideal clients on a, you know, on a regular basis, creating compelling content, which they you know, love to read, and also creating uh, a LinkedIn profile, which sells, it really adds sort of fuel to the fire. And this is the exact strategy I've used to go from this, just a tumbleweed, absolutely you know, nothing there, trying in my hardest, can't get anything, to gradually booking more and more calls, to getting a calendar full of calls there. Um, so let's jump straight into it. Let's go first of all with the, you know, the main part, which is getting your LinkedIn profile, turning it into a marketing machine. And what I've found throughout my time on LinkedIn is those people because I've changed my profile a ton of times now. I've tested what's different. I've also probably reviewed hun like hundreds of LinkedIn profiles. And I found there's like a key trend which um, attracts viewers, which you know helps people decide you're the person to basically buy from. Um, and that key trend is a bad LinkedIn profile, a profile that doesn't convert, has me, 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 me. But a good LinkedIn profile is all about your clients, the challenges they're facing. Um, it's all about their problems they have, the solution you can provide for them. And 
you know, one of the biggest things I've learned from marketing this entire time is that um, people are very interested in basically themselves. And if you were to kind of sit there with a friend and, you know, you tell your friend about like what type of day you had and how bad it was after a while, like your friend's probably going to tune out. However, what I found is that if you give people personality tests where like everything is purely based on them, they um, essentially can't get enough of it. Like they'll just keep reading and reading and reading. So we want to take this psychology and actually put it into a LinkedIn profile. And there's a few questions that we've kind of boiled down what people think when they read your profile. If somebody clicks on your profile, they have these questions. Is this relevant to me? Will it actually help me? And is this person the real deal? This is a very important point right here because in 2022, yeah, there's more people online, but also um, uh, there's potentially more like sort of almost danger out there. People want to make sure that they're spending money um, in the right places as well. So I'm going to show you how to answer these questions in your LinkedIn profile. So here's my LinkedIn profile. And this is one variation which works very, very well. And the first thing when a person clicks on your LinkedIn profile, the first thing they look at is your uh, profile picture. Now, a lot of people make mistakes when they get profile pictures done. They think, you know what, I need to spend $300 on um, you know, a, a professional headshot. I need to spend all this money looking super, super professional. This one right here was with a camera phone. And let me tell you, I had a LinkedIn profile picture years ago. And I was wearing this like bright pink shirt. I had a little bit of a tan, but the exposure was turned up so bright. It looked like I took a bath in fake tan, basically. And um, it, I still booked hundreds and hundreds of calls to it, even though it was quite low quality. Um, so that kind of tells you that, you know, it's important to have a, a warm and friendly profile picture because that's what they'll check first. As long as you're not like, you know, drinking, doing loads of shots on your profile picture and it main, some, maintains some sort of professionalism, um, it's good to actually uh, you don't put too much weight on it. Just take, take a photo, get a bit of sunlight on your face, move on from it. After a person's looked at your profile picture, they will look at your headline here. And this headline is essentially an area which um, can, tell your, can tell your ideal clients that you are relevant to them. If we think back to this first question here, is this person relevant to me? If you can answer and encapsulate in a single sentence what your service does and who it helps um, in a way where people don't have to figure it out, very, very straightforward, you'd honestly do in well, right? So mine says, I help B2B consultants and service providers get more leads through LinkedIn. It's not ambiguous at all. It tells them exactly what I do. And there's a reason for that is because you heard about um, that rule, you know, of like that when you meet a new person, they have like three seconds before, you know, you've got a first impression of each other. Then it's very hard to change that first impression. The same thing is kind of true on LinkedIn as well. So you want to make sure within the first three seconds, you are relevant to them so they can keep, then keep reading. If we look at the next question here, will it actually help me? Will the person's service actually help me? And we, we found that if you actually have a good profile picture and you have um, you know, your headline, the next area, the very next area people come to is your about me section. And your about me section, remember what we were saying before, has to be about you, 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 you in terms of um, your clients. It can't be like around you. A lot of mistakes people make in this area is they have a tendency to write it almost like a resume, like a CV. And they will write in third person like Mark was the uh, assistant director of blah, blah, blah. And the problem is with that approach, although it does tell people what you do, is people get bored when they're not reading about themselves and they, they skip. We want to keep people on our LinkedIn profile. So how we go about doing that is we um, talk mainly about like the types of problems our clients are experiencing. This is what we found like works uh, kind of the best. So does any of this sound familiar? Getting one client is like a full-time job in itself. I wanted to work for myself to have freedom, but I'm getting burned out just trying to find new clients. I wear a thousand hats. I've tried workshops, presentations, e emailing prospects, and I can't get clients consistently. During this, I um, tell 
after you know I've captured their attention with talking about their problems, their challenges, I tell them a little bit about what I do. And then I tell them a little bit about like what the solution is, what the solution to their problem is. And after that, I include a few areas where people can read uh, more information about me. So a lot of people, you know, because there's so many LinkedIn profiles out there, a lot of people now need to basically know more about you before they'll make a decision on you, before they'll make a decision even to talk to you. So if you have got some links where you can send people to uh, find more information about you, brilliant. So I've got, a, I've linked here a free training. Some people go through this, they click on my free, free training and they watch it. Other people, you know, they might just want to book a call directly. I've got a whole YouTube channel as well, which um, deals with productivity, sales advice, lead generation advice. Um, and they can get to know me a little bit through that. And it takes almost like the heavy lifting off of me. And as well, remember, one of the most important questions here, is this person the real deal? I've answered this by actually having a um, scroll to the bottom of my profile to recommendations to see what everyone else is saying about me. I've also included some, um, because my industry is particular, people are particularly wary of my industry because they often get messaged all the time from people in my industry. I have to almost overly social proof myself. So I include testimonials, reviews here. And if we scroll down to the very bottom of my profile, we could say, I've got a few um, very much like, uh, like purposeful uh, uh, reviews and testimonials. The first one here is a character review. This, uh, but we've got Ben saying here, he, uh, Rob just actually wants to help people. Like he's not one of these who's just in it for money, which in my industry, like is, um, it's good to make sure people know this, right? We've got number two here from Michelle, who's like the, Rob is the best at what he does. This is a, a very, very uh, purposeful uh, testimonial because uh, my industry has a lot, a lot of people in it who do uh, quite, quite similar things to me. And then we've got another person here, Sean, who's talking about that, how um, the result he got was uh, a really good ROI and was much more than like the amount he invested. So if we go back to this part here, is this relevant to me? Will it actually help me? Is this person the real deal? If we can answer all of those questions and ensure they're feeling good when they actually view your profile, that it's actually speaking to them, we're doing really, really well. Does that all make sense? Does that, um, you know, does that help people there? Okay. Cool. Um, okay. So we've set up a great LinkedIn profile now. And obviously the recording of this, it's going to be sent out. So, um, you know, you guys can go, go look at my profile if you want, take bits of inspiration from it and also watch the recording to, to work out why uh, we're doing certain things on it. The next area is prospecting and starting conversations on LinkedIn. And what that essentially means is, essentially messaging people who are your ideal clients on a regular basis. Many, many people don't do this. They believe they don't need it. And they believe that it's ineffective as well. But I'm going to teach you how to do it in an effective way today. So why prospect on LinkedIn, first of all? It's a method of finding new clients quickly. It's literally asking the crowd if they are interested. My first ever online course I bought um, it was a business course, and it was by this, this amazing entrepreneur called Ramit Sethi. Um, and Ramit was saying in it, like, so many people, when they're starting out in the business or where they're struggling to get clients, so many people, like, they set up a website, they get business cards, they do flyers, they do all these sorts of things. And the reason why they do these sorts of things is because they want to see if people are interested in their service. And he was like, here's a better idea for you go out and just ask people if they're interested in your service. And I took this and I kind of uh, built out a strategy around this and it works very, very well. Um, there's a certain way to do it, but when you can do it, it works very well. And it gives you an advantage over competitors who aren't prospecting. Most people are not prospecting. Most people are not allocating a daily bit of time to go out and try and meet new clients. And people who don't buy now, so even if you connect with someone, you send them a message, they don't reply. Even if they don't buy right now, they actually get to see your content, which you're going to be creating, which I'm going to tell you how to create. 
and they will almost warm up to you over time. Um, so the amount of times I've had someone who I added six months ago who didn't respond to any of my messages suddenly reach out to me later because they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I, do, I do like what Rob's got to offer because I've seen his content a, a few times now. So it's very, very beneficial. And these are, you know, conversations I've had where I've booked call after call with prospecting. Trust me, it's very, very effective. And if you can master some of the things which I'm going to talk to you about now, um, it will change the game for you. It will uh, help you build connections, you know, in, in a network. It'll help you build strong relationships with people. It'll help you um, get on sort of podcasts, things like this. It will also help you find clients uh, and get leads quickly. Um, it's very powerful when you can actually take a conversation and direct it into a call. It's a very, very powerful thing. So how do you um, actually get, actually start a conversation? First, first of all, I just want to see where everyone's at. Does everyone in the chat know how to actually connect with people, how to connect with people over LinkedIn and add people? All good. Yeah. Okay. So the, the most popular question I get in my inbox is like, yeah, I know I should be prospecting. I know I should be messaging new people uh, each day, Rob, but like, how, what do I say? How do I do it? Um, and I think, and from what I've found, if you can mimic normal conversation, it's the best way to do it. So I put it everything to the bar test. And what the bar test is, is pitch you're in a bar and uh, you want to start a conversation with the person who's right next to you at the bar. How do you go about starting that conversation? Do you do it? Um, do you start instantly asking about the challenges? Do you start like, you know, um, following up with them repeatedly like this? You don't. You, you, just, you just start a conversation with them. It doesn't even have to be related to like what you do in, in business. So the, what we're going to do next is we're going to see if there's following messages pass the bar test. Okay, so this is where you guys can get in the chat, get a little bit involved as well. Okay, so these are some actual cold messages I've received. And um, it's up to you guys whether you think it passes the bar test. We've got one here. Rob, I recently launched, the first message this is, Rob, I recently launched a lead lag report, a weekly analysis which explores intermarket trends, has updated, uh, you know, it's, it's got a lot of information now. What do you think? Uh -uh. Alex is saying, nope. Herbert's giving a shake of his head. Okay. Definitely no. not. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. Um, so you're absolutely right. It doesn't pass the test. Because I think, why should I care? Like, what's in it for me? I don't know this person. feels a bit impersonal. Also, it, it's too long. And when it's too long, it ends up in the I'll lead later, aka never inbox. And you do not want to be, when you're messaging people, ending up in the this is too long, I'll read it never, never, because people just don't ever come back to you. It's just one of those things. So what about the second one? This is from a person who's in the same group. I've never met them before, but they're in the same business group as me. What do we think? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's better. We, we, it's better, <laughs> certainly better. Um, any big goals that we are in 2021? So if we put it to the bar test, I arrive at a bar, right? Me and Alex are stood at the bar. I walk up to Alex. I've never met him before. And I'm like, hey, you know, I think it's always good to meet new people and network. Have you got any big goals? Have you got any, uh, you know, things that you're doing right now that you want to accomplish? And what happens is Alex is like, why are you asking about my goals? He tells the bartender, I get escorted out, right? It's still not, it's still not perfect. And there's actually a science. And also as well, I think this person just wants my money. If they're asking about my goals, I think this person just wants my money. And there's actually a, um, you know, a bit of a science to creating good, good um, posts, uh, good DMs that actually work. Now here's one which is very, very successful. It's highly tailored. It's very successful. So I saw your post on how highly successful people are goal-oriented. That's an interesting perspective. Have you ever seen people that are intensely goal-oriented but don't end up successful? What do you think is different? Also saw you are a fan of Ray Dalio. Me too. This was actually, a, like I say, like a DM that was very, very successful. And I'll show you why it was very successful. It's highly tailored. I've gave a reason for contact. 
It's casual. It's almost over the shoulder to Brian. I've asked a question they can actually respond to. You know, it's not about the challenges. It's not even about business or anything. It's, I found a commonality with them as well. And it's short and to the point. I've not wrote essays and essays and essays. And the, the, the thing which um, is the most important here is if you can take some of these principles, not all of them, you know, you don't have to spend uh, a long time creating ultra tailored messages, but if you can create a short and to the point message, ask a question that's, you know, that they can respond to a conversation starter and possibly give a reason for contact. So it doesn't just look like you're out there prospecting all day, trying to get money. If you can do that, you'll be doing a lot better than most of these messages that appear typically in your inbox, um, you know, from people who are desperately um, sort of trying to generate leads. Okay. And here's a bit of a prospecting overview. You start a conversation, you can, you know, send a message to someone. And then after the conversation started, then you can explain what you, what you do and ask them if they're interested because the approach is right. Everything is in the approach. After that, you can invite them for a call if, if they are interested. And then after that, you know, maybe if they don't respond or anything, you can follow up with them a little bit later. And if you do it this way, we found that like it's much better. You get a much better sort of result. It's a much better experience for the person on the other end as well. And if you can implement this in um, as like sort of a daily habit, you can generate leads using this. Is that is that are you guys feeling this? Is this good? Are you enjoying this? Yeah, great. Okay, cool. So we have created, um, we sent messages, we've sent DMs to people now. We started to build up our network. Some of them have checked our profile, but then there's some people who haven't responded to our messages, right? What we need to do next to capture this part of people is to actually create LinkedIn content. And on LinkedIn, um, content has two jobs. It's to get attention to you or your brand, and it's to educate your audience on why you are the best solution to their problem. And we've got Gary Vaynerchuk here who says, more content, more personal brand, that's how you grow. And Gary Vaynerchuk is the CEO of VaynerMedia, and he uh, does about 150 million a year in revenue. His content is all over the place. You can't really get away from it. So I like to learn from like real masters of the game. And if you could just get in front of more people, you could start capturing more attention. And on LinkedIn, there is a bit of a game. Um, you know, there's a game with like the algorithm, what works well, what doesn't work well. And to win the game, you have to know the rules of the game. And luckily I'm about to tell you the game and how the rules work on LinkedIn. So the LinkedIn content algorithm, as of right now, the 22nd of June, 2022, polls still get the most reach on the algorithm. So if you can create a poll, at least one to two, something compelling, one to two, uh, maybe times a week, maybe uh, twice every two weeks. If you could do that, you will get more views and you will bring more views. And if they start viewing uh, your poll right then, they will most likely see your next pieces of content as well because they've probably interacted with it. Posts with pictures are the next um, kind of good thing for the algorithm that get the second most views. And if you post a post with a picture, make sure it's like a picture of yourself. Um, the reason why is people respond to human faces. And if you can include pictures of yourself, even if they're not reading your content over time, they will start to recognize your face and then they will start to associate your name with it. And then they'll be like, I've seen this person a lot. Um, what have they got to say? And that's exactly what Gary Vaynerchuk does. And then we've got written posts as well. So written posts are one step down. If you're going to create a written post, I would just add a picture to your post like, and just go with this one here. The next one, this is a tough one. And I've got to be honest with you. Video on LinkedIn. It builds the trust the fastest. However, LinkedIn have not really done favors in terms of getting um, getting like more eyeballs onto video. Um, the reach is actually very low on it, but the people who do watch it, um, it builds the trust the fastest. So I would try my best if I was in your shoes to actually implement a little bit of video. It doesn't have to be long, one to two minutes a week of just 
um, talking into the camera, giving some really good value that you think your audience would actually find value. And it also tells them as well that you are the real deal. Remember that point on the first, on one of the uh, first slides? And what we've found is the least views is links and articles. I wouldn't even bother posting links and articles because honestly, the, the reach on them is just uh, terrible. And the reason why is LinkedIn, for links in particular, LinkedIn want to keep people on their platform. They, they don't want uh, you leading people off their platform. So if you need to put a link on your profile uh, in a post, you do it in your profile here, you do it here as well. These are good places to do links because uh, it's not punishing you for having a link here. And you can even see here, uh, me trying to advertise this webinar, LinkedIn were drastically punishing me. They let the first one get a few views was still much, much lower than I usually get. After that, two days ago, 25 views, okay? 25 views, I have a network of 5,000 people and it only showed it to 25 people just because it was like, hmm, this rock guy is trying to take people um, away from the site. So how does, what type of content do we post? I hear you asking, you know, Rob, uh, it's all good knowing what gets eyeballs, but what do we even say when we post content? I'm going to show you some examples here of what's actually worked and what's actually booked calls for me. So we can see here, um, I've made a poll. This is just a poll here. And all I've, all I've made a po the poll about is why do you think some people add you to their connections but don't actually reply or start a conversation with you? It's got 76 votes. It's got over 4,000 views. My connections are actually starting conversations with each other because it's something people can share an opinion on. If you can get people engaging and sharing opinions, um, and we can see Linda here has then moved over to my inbox um, because it's very natural, remember, for me to, oh, well, we're already talking on my posts. We might as well start talking on my pro, uh, in like the inbox. So it's natural conversation. And if we can do that, um, we can book calls that way. And you can see this is video content here. Um, it's got 1,300 views um, and it's directly value for my audience. This is how I booked 100 sales calls to LinkedIn in 3.5 months and how you can too. It's directly just at them because remember, people are quite interested in just like their own problems and, and trying to solve them. It got 938 minutes viewed for an eight minute video. That's, you know, it's pretty good. And then under that, we could say, love your presentation. I would welcome your input and assistance with my business in retirement coaching. I am building a coaching program. Would love to hear your thoughts. Um, and now these people are open to conversations. I can actually reach out to them because uh, they've commented. They've, they've actually gave me permission to as well. Here's a written post right now. Um, and there's nothing special about this written post. I'm saying happy Friday. Um, I'm saying drop me a message over LinkedIn if you are serious about making a change in your business. It's only got three likes. It hasn't got many views at all. And uh, we've got another person who's called Rob. Uh, believe it or not, this isn't actually me messaging myself. Uh, but this person is saying, I'm down for a call. I'm a salesman in the steam industry. Great. Uh, we've booked a call with him. And as you can see, like, if you can implement all three of these together, I would recommend doing all three because that you can see they all kind of feed into each other. You are going to be doing, you know, pretty, pretty well. And maybe at the start, you know, I would never walk into a, a gym as like a 16 year old and expect to like sort of uh, bench press 400 pounds. These are skills that you get better at. You should be trying to sharpen the sword. In my opinion, um, in messaging ideal clients daily and getting more content out there, understanding your audience more so you can provide actual value to them. If you can keep doing this in sync, you will start to get leads. Um, and that is the end of my short presentation for today. Um, and shall we have a look and see if there's any people out there who potentially want to ask questions or post their LinkedIn profile? I could see that somebody's posted the LinkedIn profile here. Okay, excellent. I, I, I love it. First of all, um, okay, so, so we, have, we got, have we got a few people? Oh, we've got a few in here. Have we got a few in here? I'm I think we've got to... the first one. Let's first start one. with that one that you've got there. Okay, cool. Um, so first of all, love your profile picture. Very smiley, very friendly, very warm. That's, there's nothing else you would require from this. What I would potentially do is... Um, change your headline so that you um, are specifically talking to who you are targeting in a single sentence 
change it from owner uh, at STEM college to actually like what it is you do, who it is you help. See if you can encapsulate that in a plain English statement. So it's easy, easy to read. Okay. Um, just having a little look at your about section here. I'm an educator who's several effective learning systems. Okay. I'll choose it. My team. I love the fact that you've mentioned that, you know, your, your, your team, you've helped hundreds of students in there who were falling behind in their schoolwork. I love the fact of that. I would potentially see if you can actually include that as a potential review or testimonial, maybe reach out to some of these students and see if you can, um, you know, get like character statements or something like that and input them at the top exactly like as I did. And then what I would do is I'd talk about the problems your potential you know, students are actually facing. What are they facing? What's their challenges? What is the solution you are providing to their problem? And what does their future look like? Okay. Um, and any, um, you know, any type of way, what I always recommend to people is actually to go back to previous clients, previous customers, previous students, and find a way to see if people will actually, you know, come over, uh, just send them a link, come over to your profile and say, would you mind leaving, did you, did you have a good experience? Would you mind leaving a review? I'm trying to build reviews. If you just open and honest with people like that, it's very, very, um, uh, like easy to actually get reviews and you can include some recommendations here as well. Also, if you've got any further information, you can give people, include a little link at the bottom, maybe a call to action to actually book a call with you. Hope that helps. Awesome. That was excellent, Rob. I'm Fantastic curious with that, um, with that call to action, Rob, even though you've got it, I mean, when we looked at your profile, it was quite low in your about page. Is that the main way you get calls from you know through your linkedin profile is it in that about place or do you put that do you find so, that you get them elsewhere in your linkedin profile um so generally people need a bit of a shove over the cliff to actually jump uh, jump on a call with you but you can tell when it works very well is when you get people actually on um a call with you and they say you know what i was reading through you because i always ask at the start you know what made what made you want to jump on a call with me and when they say things like, uh, I was reading through your profile, it really sounded similar to kind of what I was experiencing right now, or like, I was reading through your profile, and it sounded like you were the person to help. These are all like key indicators that basically people um, are reading your profile and they're, it's resonating with them, which is really what I'm looking for. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm just thinking of the actual call to action, the actual link. Do you know if you're getting people from that link that you put in your about page or it's, is that somewhere? It's, it's rare, and if you look at like the um, like prospect journey, mm -hmm. and I ask them about it, usually they've went and looked at my training, then they've saw some more of my LinkedIn yeah. content, then they've went over to YouTube. It's actually quite hard to track the the client journey. No, that makes sense uh, then. But yeah, generally, generally it's um, a bit of a shove over the edge uh, is what they need, either in Messenger or um, you know through some like content I've put out which has got calls to action in it. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Uh, have we got any other questions here? I mean, uh, I don't think we do, but I've, I've got a couple of further questions that I'm sure others are probably thinking about is that bar test. I think a lot of people are embarrassed at bars as well as they're online <laughs> in terms of <laughs> yes. starting, yes. starting that initial conversation. Like, uh, as an example, if I, I, I've never tried it, maybe I should try it, but it, just writing like hey rob how are you going like it linkedin does feel like a place where people are busy as well and so i guess i find personally i find that but i'm sure other people do as well it's like how do you start a authentic conversation when you don't even know if you've got eye contact yet right yeah so it's a great question and a lot of this as well is no, i'm glad you brought this up because a lot of it as well is really knowing your target market and your niche as well so um, I went through, a, this is a good example, I went through a stage of I was reaching out to um, life coaches, um, seeing if like I could help them with their lead generation process. And what I actually found was, um, if I asked like, uh, you know, what you're currently struggling with, or what your current challenges are, um, like they would not resonate, they would actually stop replying to me like 10 out of 10 times. And the reason why is once you know that niche, um, 
it turns out that they always like to look to, posit to the positive future rather than to the painful past. And so as soon as I changed the language around and I was actually like, oh, you know what? Um, you know, what are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to do right now? I could see you're on LinkedIn. I can see you're posting a bit of content. Like what are you trying to do? Much, much better at actually replying. So if you've got like busy CEOs out there, because I deal with them as well, um, you probably, if they're, po if they're active and they're posting content, just mention, you see that Brian post uh, DM before? He was actually, he's a very, very busy CEO. And um, as long as it's like related to their content and you can kind of fall into that category of like, uh, you know, he's not death desperately trying to sell to me at the moment, or maybe, you know, just reach out to them, send a video message. One of the clients I have at the moment, uh, a very busy CEO again, I actually sent a video message to him when he connected with me. And I was just like, hey, you know, I uh, read your profile. Looks like you're doing some great things over there. Um, let me know if I can help or support in anything anyway. It put him in the content bucket. One month later, he saw the content, reached out for help um, and became a client. So it's really about knowing like your customers and knowing how to actually talk to them. What do they like? Are they, are they really too busy? Do you actually need to be a little bit more direct with them or are they going to be okay if you just kind of approach them indirectly as well? Amazing. Um, I'm going to finish just on, I know that a lot of our, the people listening in that particularly in the recording will be corporate language businesses. And I imagine their number one issue is starting the conversation how do you have any kind of examples of how you like maybe putting yourself in their shoes how might you start that conversation with a potential hr manager you don't know them very well they've connected with you they don't really have anything on their linkedin to use because if if they're an hr manager they may not like mm -hmm. to post so there's not there's no ammunition there is just simply you know their name you know that they're on linkedin because you know that they're networking but they're not posting anything. And so you don't really know anything about them personally. Yeah, I mean, there's a few different ways to do it, honestly. Um, and it's always tough if it's like a very dry person where you can't actually you know, get anything from them. And a simple way to do it is to take the same principles and actually go direct as well and say, hey, I'm actually working with A, B and C uh, client. I've, I've reached out because uh, I saw, I came across you on LinkedIn. Is this actually something that's relevant for you? Or another way to do it, uh, as long as it's short, polite, and not overstepping the boundaries. Another way to do it is actually hold research calls with people. And this is, this is something very, very good for people who are maybe earlier on in the entrepreneur journey, um, but can also work if you're later on as well. It's a bit of a ninja trick. So what you say is, you say something like, uh, I'm actually, you know, really trying to build out a great X, Y, Z for this niche right now. I know you're in the niche. I, I, I can see that you've got years of experience. Would you mind if uh, I can ask you a few questions about this niche just so I can build up the products, just because you're, you're obviously an expert in this mm -hmm. area. And that actually works way better uh, most times than uh, nothing. So you get on the call with them, you have a research call with them, you ask a few questions for them and you say to them in the end, hey, look, um, if... Um, I do end up building out this program. Can I follow up with you in like a month or something? And because it's casual, phrases the person as an expert and is polite as well. People love to be phrased as an expert. Mm. Um, it actually works and you kind of build right. up your, your pipeline for next month as well. I think that could really work in the, in the language yeah. sector. And I think even with uh, tutors looking at schools, like getting schools who are, you know, as part of like, Hey, I'm really thinking of how we approach things better. Can I borrow you? Mm -hmm. um, uh, this, that was a, a great place to finish, I think. Well,